Oh, happy night. Happy night. <laughs> Praise God. How's everybody tonight? Yes. Are you blessed and highly flavored? Are you anointed and appointed? Amen. Are you a soldier of the Most High? Yes. Are you the offspring of grace? Yes. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Another day of breath. <laughs> Would you grab your swords this evening and turn to John, the Gospel of John. Chapter 1. Glory to God. Well, you don't need any irrigation right now, John, I can tell you that. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 6, let's speak it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor will the will of man, but of the will of God. You know, being born in the spirit and out of the will of God, Hallelujah. <laughs> it's be considered being born out of time. Everybody got it? You were born out of time. Because you weren't born in time, you were born out of time. When you are born again, you are born out of time. You're not born in time. When we, our first birth is a birth in time. Time is considered temporary. Amen? But there is a time which we call eternal time, which there is no time. It's timeless. So when you and I were born of the Spirit, we were actually born out of time. So that means that there had to be a timeless seed. A timeless seed. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3. Can everybody hear me? For now? Praise God. If you can't, let me know. Verse 14. Genesis 3, verse 14. <laughs> oh, happy days. Let's speak it. So the Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. Now her seed is capital. He shall bruise your head, but you will bruise his heel. And to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he will rule over you. Again, we are talking about a temporary seed and a timeless seed. God was telling 
the serpent because you have done this thing, there will be a seed that you will send, but it will be part of the time world. But I'm going to send a timeless seed. Everybody got it? Praise God. So there's a timeless seed of God that would bring power to destroy deception and corruption. By its own death to create a race out of time, but in time. Come on, grab hold of this. Get your antennas up. Catch it. I'm going to say that again. A time, this is a, God was saying, I'm going to send a timeless seed that's for me. That would bring power to destroy deception and corruption. By its own death to create a race out of time, but in time. Galatians 3. Power to destroy deception and corruption by its own death to create a race out of time but in time. Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. <laughs> we will be challenged this evening. You're going to have to hear, not listen. <laughs> Galatians 3.15 Brethren, I speak in manner of men, though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed. So we see the seed is coming down the line of Abraham also. Were the promises made, he does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is who? Christ. And this I say that the law, which for, was for 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer a promise, of promise, but of God gave it to Abraham by promise. So we see here the seed he's talking about is Christ. He was going to be sending the anointing, the anointed one, and his anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, the timeless seed. And John 12. In verse 20. 12, 20. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now there was a certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from the city of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew told Philip, told Jesus. But Jesus answered them saying, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat, which is known as a seed, falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who li loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And if anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, 
him my father will honor. Now this is very powerful because he's giving us a formula again, which we already know, which is the spirit, the law of the spirit, which is deny yourself, pick up the cross and follow. Amen. But he talks about as the grain is being the seed and the seed dies to produce more. That's where you must deny, you and I have to say we must deny ourselves. That's what we always say. It's a good day to die. Because in reality, our death to self is going to produce more seed. Amen? Yeah. It's a good day to die. Romans 9. Romans 9, 6. Let's speak it together. But it's not that the word of God has taken no effect, for they are not all Israel, but are of Israel, who are of Israel. Nor are they all children, because they are the seed of Abraham. And Isaac, your seed, shall be called. That is, those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Again, he expresses two places. There are the children of the time, and there are children of the seed of timeless. Amen? Those are the ones that are children of God. We know that a timeless seed is an eternal seed. And time, being in time means temporary, because we know time is going to get swallowed up also. So it's a temporary but the children of the promise are counted as the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time I will come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also has conceived by one man, even by our father Isaac, for the children not yet being born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of him who calls it was said to her the older shall serve the younger as it is written Jacob I have loved but Esau I have hated what shall we say then is there unrighteousness with God certainly not for he says to Moses I will have mercy on whomever I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whomever I will have compassion so then it is not of him who wills nor of him who runs but of God who shows mercy for the scripture says to the Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up that I may show my power in you and that my name may be declared in all the earth. Therefore he has mercy on whom he wills and whom he wills he hardens. So there's the children of the flesh of the time and temporary time and there's the children of God which is a timeless eternal. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15, we'll start at verse 1. Is everybody okay? Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which you stand, by which also you are saved. If, if what? If what? If you hold fast that word which was preached to you, unless you believe in vain. Now, this is powerful, because it just nullifies once saved, always saved, doesn't it? He says, only if you hold on to what I've given you. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to Scripture. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by t the twelve. And after that he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present. But some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen by James and then by all the apostles. Those are the 500 he was telling, don't leave Jerusalem until you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Then last of all, he was seen by me also as by one what? Born out of due time or one born out of what? Time. 
See, Paul had a revelation about the timeless seed. He realized that the gospel he was given was timeless. And it was seeds of timeless that were labeled with his words. And he realized himself that he was not born of time anymore. He was born out of time. And things were different. That's what born again truly is. See, you, you and I can't just be born again by just saying we're born again. You must be connected to the eternal realm. Amen? You must be connected by the Spirit of God. Again, you must maintain that place as you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and repented for your sins truly and been touched by God and filled with the Spirit of God. Because there is a state of being born again. There's a state of being saved and there's a state of being born again. Those are two different states of being. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So the gospel is a timeless message of imprinted seeds. I'm going to say that again. The gospel is a timeless message of imprinted seeds. First John chapter 3. These seeds are called timeless seeds. That's why the world has a hard time reading the Bible. In fact, many of them have a hard time with us. First John chapter 3. In verse 4. It says, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in, in him there is no sin. Now, grab hold of this, because sin is, only a source, is not in the timeless realm. Does everybody get it? The presence of darkness is not in the timeless realm. Even though they may be a part of another dimension... Amen? They're still not in a timeless realm. God has them all in a time realm, regardless of what dimension they're out of. Does everybody get this? So the presence of evil sin and all of its forces are in a temporary time realm. But only you and I who are born again of the Spirit from the timeless seed are associated with a timeless realm called eternity. They are not. They will be sentenced to a timeless realm called eternity. But they will not live in the timeless realm in the place of blessing and righteousness. Does everybody get this? Praise God. Verse 6. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his what? His seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. That means sin cannot have dominion over you. If you are still walking in that state of being born again, you are walking and staying connected to the timeless seed, the timeless realm called eternity, where there is no sin. There is no presence of darkness. So you and I are actually protected. We are shielded. We are, that's when the seal, when something is sealed, it's covered. We're sealed with the anointing. Why? Because this is how we maintain. Our breath no longer is a breath of this realm. It's a breath of eternal. That's why it's called holy breath, holy spirit. 
It's a different breath. Yeah, well, we still need to have oxygen, amen, to maintain this fallen nature. But we have dominion over this now. It's not a part of that place we live. Does everybody get this? It may be in the same, in the same temple, but it ain't in the same room. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So sin exists in the realm of, the of temporary known as time, not in the timeless realm of the spirit. So you and I have been born out of time, conceived with a timeless seed. We are not subject to serve sin in the presence of sin or evil. Amen. The seed remains until redemption of the body unless someone gives away that seed. Somebody get it. See, that seed remains in me and you until the fullness of the redemption. And our fullness of the redemption is a glorified body. Then the seed becomes the body. 1 Peter chapter 1. Oh, happy days. I believe that when I was asking the Holy Spirit about this, because it's kind of like a, an area of process of reconnecting all the time and, and continuing to water our reality of who we really are. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 17 Speak it. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves with, throughout the time of your stay here in what? Fear, which is actually fear of God. Amen. <laughs> Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold, but your aim, for your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of the Lamb, without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So he just expressed and confirmed that the word of God is a timeless seed. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withers and, it, and its flower falls away. But the word of God, the word of the Lord, endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Corruptible seed and incorruptible seed. One is timeless, one is associated with time. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrew 2. Verse 14. Hebrews 2, verse 14. Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed he does not give aid to the angels, but he gives aid to the seed of Abraham. Who is that? Us. So angels are working on our behalf. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to aid those who were also tempted. So we see angels assist 
the timeless seeds. Does everybody get it? Not those of the time. Not until God begins to draw. In Matthew 25, Again, this is kind of like a process of reconnect of your, our identity, continuing to water our identity. Or we lose who we really are. Remember, the, the enemy comes to tamper with your identity. If he can get you to turn over your identity or steal your identity or compromise your identity, he gains access. Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to the one he gave five talents, and another two, and another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had five received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you have delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And the Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. This is where it's important that you don't need to compare yourself to what God is used doing with another person. He's granted specific talents and abilities to every individual. And some people are trying to, because they don't have their true identity of who they are, they're still trying to be somebody else. And that's where that disconnect comes into place. Verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you would be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered what? Seed. Now he just expressed to him that the money he was talking about, the the parable of this was actually seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you, you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and, my, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given. And he who has abundance, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast that unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, he was talking about the servants as stewards of God's goods, of his seed. We're to be considered going out. We are carriers of the timeless seeds. We're to scatter these seeds by impart, imparting them in individuals that are coming to Christ. That's why we must be ready in season and out. Remember, we carry a, a timeless seed in the gospel of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In Mark 4, Timeless seed.
Mark 4, verse 13. Now, if you recall, Esau sold his seed. Amen? People are selling their seeds these days for fame and fortune, for temporary and false fulfillments. In verse 13, let's speak it. And Jesus said to him, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word, which is the what? Seed. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These, likewise, are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves. And the reason why that isn't is because they're not planted. And so endure only for a time, after when tribulation or persecution arises, for the word's sake immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things entering in choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on ground, good ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. So we know that the devil comes to steal the seed. Amen. Again, that's why it's so important to be planted so that seed maintains watering. And that's our responsibility. Amen. Because the next thing you know, that timeless seed has been exchanged for a time seed, and a person is in trouble then. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Matthew 23. Simple reminder tonight. Timeless seed. Again, when, you know, when, when things begin to happen... When you send struggles and things, step back and just remember, you know what, I don't belong here anyways. <laughs> I don't belong here. All of this stuff going on, I don't belong here. Just temporary. This place is nothing but trouble. <laughs> it's nothing but pain and heartaches. Amen? Thank God we're connected. We're the only thing that brings joy here by the Spirit of the living God. Amen? <laughs> Matthew 23, 24. Matthew 23, 24. Very interesting. Is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Uh, blind guides who strain out a gnat and will swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outward of the outside of the cup and dish, but the inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous to men, but inward you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn the mon monuments of the righteous, and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Therefore you are witnesses against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, broad of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore indeed I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill 
and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all, come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Beriah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Again, scribes and Pharisees, they were writing not about the timeless seeds now. Things had changed. They were promoters of time and not timelessness. They became hypocrites. They were trying to talk about a timeless seed that was to come, but yet they themselves could not up, walk uprightly. And they were persecuting those who were of the timeless seed. Amen? And we see that now. And when we see the greatest persecution of Christians is right now. It's happening globally. Even our own political parties that are of the deep state, the left, left out, you know, way left. Even some of the liberals and all the other, you got all of these societies and whatever that are persecuting Christians because it's the end time. The end time against the timeless seed. Oh, happy days. Go to Galatians. Galatians chapter something. Galatians 5. Verse 16. I say then walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. So you don't do the things that you wish or you desire. But if you are led by the spirit... If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now remember, the law is associated not with the timeless seed because if we're led by the Spirit, we have fulfilled the law. Amen? So that the timeless seed that's within me and you, and we are born of the timeless seed, maintains an active state of being. Only if we are led by the Spirit does it maintain an active state of being. When we're not led by the Spirit, it becomes dead, nullified. And this is when the enemy comes to try to exchange or steal the timeless seed for a temporary seed. Does everybody understand? Hallelujah. Let's go to Psalm 92. Psalm 92. You know, when you, when you look at everything, Jesus was always talking about our garden, soil, seeds, harvest time with the seeds. Everything was about seeds, planting. And it's still happening right now. It's not, it's not done. It's still continuing. But remember, where was Jesus' battle? It was in the garden. Amen? Amen. It was in the garden. Over what? A timeless seed. He was willing to sacrifice his own self so that he could rise again and carry the timeless seed to everyone else willing to follow him. Then you and I could be timeless seed carriers through the gospel of Christ 
and plant timeless seeds in the individuals that are willing to receive. In Psalm 92 and verse 12, Let's speak it. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord. Say it again. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age, and they shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Psalm 1. That's why we are warned in the latter days, right? We are in the last days that there will be doctrines of demons. These doctrines of demons and seducing spirits are promoters of a corruptible seed. In verse 1, Psalm 1, Blesses the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law he meditates day and night. That means he's watering the timeless seed. He shall be like a what? Tree, what? Planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. But the ungodly are not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the, upright, up the, of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. It is a process to reconnect to our identity of who we are. We are a timeless generation in a temporary realm. Don't lose sight of who you are. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening, things that are not happening in the way you expect them to, welcome to the earth. Amen? We know because we are a timeless generation, eternal, that all things are going to work to the good, no matter what. And we cannot be touched unless we allow it. Only if we allow it. Amen? Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect the seed of timelessness that's been empowered in us. Let it grow and bear fruit for your glory that we may have the reality and revelation of who we truly are in a temporary realm, in a temporary realm as a timeless generation of warriors for your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.